It's nice to see you all here today, and um, <coughs> I'm really keen to talk to you about the things that are happening here in the university at the moment. There are many very interesting developments. In my last presentation to court, I focused on the successes of the previous year, a year which had possibly been the best in the history of the university certainly in terms of the objective performance indicators that we were looking at. These successes have continued, and I would like to thank all of those who have contributed from within the university and in the wider community to that success. As we approach the 50th anniversary of our Royal Charter, we have been reflecting on the current challenges facing higher education and how we might best position ourselves to face these challenges and how we support the local economy and the national economy in doing this. <coughs> Taking these things into account, a clear direction is emerging for the university and I would like to share that new university strategy with you here today. Before I do that, it's worth just emphasising where we are today, what the current position of the university is. Of course, the university is now a well-established, research-intensive institution with just over 3,000 staff. Our annual turnover this year is more than 260 million, and our annual research portfolio is worth in excess of 150 million pounds. At the last census date, which was the 1st of December 2015, there were 16,417 students registered in the university. 12,097 of those were undergraduates. 3,331, that's to say 20% of the total student body, were from outside of the UK and the European Union. You might think I'm being overly precise in giving you figures in that way. I think I'm trying to emphasise that every single student matters in this <laughs> university, um, and they certainly do. We, cont we continue to be placed highly in the UK league tables and have risen substantially in the international rankings. Our successes make the University of Bath a highly sought-after choice for students. To date, we have received over 22,000 applications from home EU students for next year and a further 5,500 applications from people outside of the UK or EU. We have available for undergraduate students next year 3,088 3, places. I make that close to a 9 to 1 ratio in terms of the selection we have to make. To contextualise our success, I think that this year it would be useful for court to be made aware of the broader contribution of the university to the local and national economy. And I have a slide. Because it's important to um, have independent evidence of one's economic impact, um, and whilst there are well-established methods for quantifying our success in research and education, it is more difficult to establish what level of success uh, means for Bath and North East Somerset, which I will persist in calling Baines from here on in, um, and for the UK as a whole. There is more difficult to get the metrics right. Last autumn, as a consequence, we commissioned an independent organisation called Oxford Economics to investigate this on our behalf. And their report, published in January 2016, provides evidence of our contribution to the local and national economy. And that is summarised in the slides. Let me just take you through it really quickly. We directly or indirectly 
supported over 5,800 jobs in Baines in 2014-15. That's equivalent to one in every 17 jobs in the district. Our value-added contribution to Baines GDP in 2014-15 is estimated to be £294 million. Pounds. That's 6.2% of the district's economic output. Over £9,500 in extra value added is supported by each additional student that we have. That includes activity supported through subsistence spending and visitors attracted to the area by our student population. And the economic activity in Bain supported by the university, its students and visitors, generated a total tax contribution to Baines of £71 million pounds in 1415. We are an important part of the success of this community. It's worth saying something about the context in which we are delivering this impact. And this context is driving the development of the new strategy that I've referred to earlier. With higher education becoming increasingly competitive, additional pre pressures have been brought to bear by changes proposed at government level. The removal of the student numbers cap has influenced the strategy of some institutions. Many are massively increasing student numbers at the undergraduate level. At a local level, pressure on residential accommodation in Bath has the potential to limit the university's growth. We have been working closely with Bain's colleagues and the council members to investigate ways in which these difficulties can be overcome. But we cannot do what some other institutions have chosen to, to do in growing as rapidly as they have. The recent Green Paper on higher education and the Nurse Review of Research Councils have introduced elements of uncertainty for the sector. In particular, the introduction of a teaching excellence framework and its potential impact on the fee levels that universities can charge makes future planning of a university very difficult. But it is clear that teaching excellence will be vital to the future success of universities. The final element in the overall recent changes of context that I would point you to is the fact that there has recently been the introduction of postgraduate loans for master's degrees and this will operate from 2016. So people wanting to do a master's degree can get a loan in the same way that undergraduates do. This should make study at the postgraduate level more accessible. It's interesting that in addition to that, last week there was an announcement of loans for doctoral student study, and that of key importance for the strategy that I'm going to talk about. So responding to the changes in the external environment and building on our existing strengths, the university is devising a new strategy for 2016 onwards. Our vision is to become an international leader in postgraduate education. And in order to do this, we will look to first of all strengthen the research base and extend our industrial and commercial partnerships. We will stabilize undergraduate numbers, but maintain the excellent quality of the undergraduate experience academically and in extracurricular provision. We will grow graduate student numbers at both the master's and doctoral levels and improve the experience that our postgraduate students have while they are here at this university. We will invest in infrastructure on and off the campus, sometimes outside of Baines. And we will enhance our international profile and reputation. I'll give you some further flesh on these generalizations. 
In terms of research, we will seek to increase our critical mass in an increasingly competitive market, appointing more research active staff, including a second round of prize fellows to enable us to increase our research power as well as enhancing our research quality. Power is very much associated with volume in the current higher education sector. Secondly, we will grow our industrial and commercial partnerships in order to deliver innovation and impact which is sustainable and scalable. An example of this is the, the £10 million Centre for the Analysis of Motion Entertainment Research and Applications. That was the Centre for the Analysis of Motion Entertainment Research and Applications. The reason it's called that is then you get camera out of it. <laughs> um, camera is a collaboration between our departments of computer science and health in partnership with companies including the Imaginarium and the Foundry, as well as BMT Defence Services, British Skeleton, the MOD, Baines itself, and the West of England Local Economic Partnership. Camera will create advanced motion tracking technologies for use in the entertainment industry, as well as to enhance athletic performance and develop assistive technologies. It's an example of the sorts of partnerships which are going to develop really high quality and significant critical mass in research. In terms of education, we intend to stabilise our undergraduate numbers while continuing to enhance the student experience both academically and through extracurricular activity. We will look to shift the balance of our student population towards postgraduates at both masters and doctoral levels. We have already begun to identify key areas for postgraduate growth and to consider ways in which we might attract and support postgraduate students more effectively. We will consider ways in which we can enhance the graduate student experience in line with the undergraduate student experience, which is recognised to be so excellent here. The Students' Union has already embraced this challenge and is introducing a postgraduate sabbatical officer role from 2016-17. I think that somebody has now been elected. Jordan is uh, the president of the Students' Union, is agreeing with me. And I am looking forward to working with that uh, officer to make sure that we take advantage of the support that the Students' Union can offer. We will explore innovative styles of delivery to enable students to be taught off campus as part of this shift of um, the distribution between undergraduates and postgraduate students. And we will innovate in the design and delivery of doctoral programs. In terms of our international profile, we will look to increase our international student numbers and establish teaching and research programs in partnership with influential non-UK universities. This is well underway already and will be accelerated. We will continue to explore opportunities and build on successes such as the groundbreaking partnerships with the South African government to provide doctoral training for the next generation of university leaders, which some people heard about earlier um, in the presentation in the lectures earlier this afternoon. Second example would be the work with the University of Camp Campinas, Unicamp, in Brazil, to run joint 50th anniversary workshops and these workshops are on water, advanced water treatment technology and water resource management, health and physical activity, optimising performance in spinal cord injured athletes, and the role of exercise therapy in the prevention of degeneration and cardiometabolic disease. These are simply examples 
of the sort of partnership that we are looking for in terms of those international collaborations. They are exciting, they push the boundaries of our knowledge, and certainly they are likely to have increasing significant impact because they are solving some of the most intriguing challenges facing us globally. In terms of infrastructure, the strategy requires that we will continue to invest over a million pounds a week to improve our infrastructure and pursue opportunities for growth both on and off campus. On campus, we have seen the development of the new 10 West and 4 East South buildings this year. Both buildings are nearing completion. 10 West is ahead of the other one. Yes. Um, I'm told, actually, that 4 East South should be ready on the 6th of June. Some of you who are old enough will remember that was the day of the D-Day landings. I hope that this is equally <laughs> significant. Um, the intriguing thing is that in line with our new strategy, the top floors of 10 West will house a new graduate or doctoral commons for research students within the university, providing an environment that allows them to develop uh, an identity as a group rather than the fragmented uh, approach that we have adopted in the past. In addition, a new state-of-the-art building to allow us to grow and excel further in the field of evolutionary research and outreach is in the planning stages. Funded through the generous donation of an alumnus, Dr. Jonathan Milner, this new building will house the Milner Centre for Evolutionary Science from 2017 onwards. Off campus, the transformation of the university's prem premises in Manvers Street is progressing well. I am resisting the temptation to call it the old police station. Following the move of most of the finance and procurement team into the building in April 2015, planning permission has now been granted for a 4.5 million learning zone within the office space for student-facing services. Um, we, this, this should be a transformational position for the university, allowing our students to have that study centre in the heart of the city. And the quality of provision there is as good as anything we are seeing here on campus. And I know that for a fact because the university librarian, Kate Robinson, has actually been so influential in designing this space. Um, not to say that the students haven't also been influential in designing the space. Thank you, Jordan. Um, <laughs> essentially, all of this that I'm talking about um, has a theme that runs underneath, and that is the theme of partnership. It runs throughout all of the activities that we need to pursue. Partnerships with alumni, as in the Milner Centre. Partnerships with industry, as in camera. With governments, as in the South African example. With local and international universities, with schools, and with our local council very particularly. As part of our membership of GW4, an alliance with the universities of Bristol, Cardiff, and Exeter, we are now leading an expression of interest to conduct a science and innovation audit for the entire Southwest. That audit will involve a consortium of universities, local authorities, local economic partnerships, and businesses. It will focus on identifying regional strengths and potential areas of strategic focus. It will map future potential for growth and show how investments in science and innovation lead to productivity in the region and in the local area more broadly. We want to lead on that audit. We want to champion that process because we believe it's important that universities like ours that are excellent in, excellent in research, but also excellent in the way in which they develop graduates, contribute to their local and regional economies. <coughs> we value the partnerships that I'm talking about, and we see them as being key to future success as the university moves into its next 50 years. 
We're facing some major challenges, but with a clear strategy and strong collaborations, I believe that we are well equipped to face them.